This is the ketone data from our, our patients in the Indiana University Health Study, and this is 216 people followed out to, to 12 months. And again, we, what we see is, um, again, people with type 2 diabetes are highly insulin resistant, and you know, it's a victory to get people above 0.5, and they, they were able to stay above 0.5 out to here, out to eight months. Now, they were becoming more insulin sensitive, and yet the ketones are going down. And so there are questions about increased ability to use them. Uh, so um, uh, you know, maybe they're, they're using them more efficiently, but our experience is for these people that they're, they're expanding the range of their food intake. Uh, and uh, so you know, they're experimenting with their, their tolerance coming out to this point. Uh, uh, but still, they're maintaining ketones at 0.4, whereas a fully carb-fed person is going to be in the 0.1, 0.2 range here. When somebody goes on a well-formulated ketogenic diet, and I first saw this and reported it in 1980, and then pretty much every study I've done where we measured thyroid function, the hormone, the pre-hormone made by the thyroid gland, which is tetraiodothyronine, we call it T4 for short, has four iodines on it. To make active thyroid hormone, you have to whack off one of the iodines. That's done by the liver. And so the, the, when we measure T4 on a ketogenic diet, it stays nice and constant. When we measure T3, it plummets. I mean, it typically drops 40% in the first week or two, and then stays down. And it happens in overweight people, it happens in older people, it happened in my bike racers, uh, and so it happened in the, the guys who were the ultramarathon runners. Uh, the, 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 the ultra marathoners in the faster study had very low T4s compared to the guys, or T3s compared to the guys who were eating a high carb diet. And when, when we, Jeff Volick did one study where he actually measured resting metabolism, which is probably your best measure of youth thyroid state. And in a crossover study where guys were on the ketogenic diet, I think for three weeks, and then they were on the, the high carb diet for three weeks, or vice versa. There was no difference, statistically no difference in resting metabolism, even though their T3 was down dramatically. In fact, it trended slightly higher. Uh, and then since the year 2000 or so, we've had this thing called TSH, which is the brain signal say, make more, make more. And if, they, if the body was hypothyroid, TSH should go up and it doesn't. So the evidence is that the body becomes much more T3 sensitive increased sensitivity to the hormone. So you get a lot more metabolic mileage out of the, 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 that hot hormone, which means there's less work for the thyroid and the liver to do. And it fits into the pattern that we also see improved insulin sensitivity. So actually, there's evidence that we're seeing multiple hormonal sensitivities improving in lockstep when people go on this diet. Uh, in other words, it, you know, it's like you know, getting twice the mileage out of a per gallon of gas in your car. Dr. Kushner, I'm starting to sweat. But I'm just saying, this points out a potential danger because there's a whole industry in the United States, and I'm sure here as well, where people are prescribing T3 for a low T3 because they claim that the TSH doesn't adequately reflect the, the, the body's uh, thyroid exposure. And for someone who's on nutritional ketosis, this could be a real problem because you would essentially be creating an artificial hyperthyroid state. Yes, actually, a guy named Louis Vignati in 1978 did that at uh, the uh, Beth Israel Medical Center in a group of people on a supplemented fast. And when he made them, brought the T3 up to their previously fed level, uh, their metabolic rate went a little bit higher, but their protein wasting, it was their pro protein breakdown accelerated. It was published back then and people have totally ignored that. By the way, our data is we haven't published that metabolic rate data anywhere else than in our blog because you know we have a hard time getting stuff published and you know we just we'll put it in the blog so it's in the blog on vertahealth.com and the, the, the title is does your thyroid need carbs